In this video, we shall demonstrate the procedure of chest physiotherapy. Chest physiotherapy techniques are utilized in ventilated and extubated neonates with compromised respiratory function due to excessive secretions and mucus plugging. Studies in ventilated preterm neonates have documented improvement in oxygenation and airway resistance and reduced number of hypoxemic episodes. Reduction in endotracheal obstruction and extubation failure in infants receiving peri-extubational physiotherapy has also been observed. However, vigorous percussion in vulnerable preterm infants and poor usage of supportive developmental care techniques have been reported to be linked with intraventricular hemorrhage and hence it should be done in this group only if very essential and addition should be very gentle. Now let us understand the indications of chest physiotherapy in ventilated babies. Chest physiotherapy should be considered in ventilated infants if there are changes in chest x-ray like segmental or lower collapse secondary to mucus plugging or aspiration. If the infant is having tenacious secretions which are not effectively cleared with suction or if there are signs of acute secretion retention like decreased saturation, PO2, decreased chest movements or air entry or if there is increased PCO2 or airway resistance. In extubated or spontaneously breathing babies, chest physiotherapy may be required when post extubation there is an inadequate secretion clearance with or without chest x-ray changes. In babies having secretion retention due to chronic lung disease, in babies with congenital neuromuscular pathologies resulting in weak respiratory muscles and ineffective cuff. These babies may require prophylactic physiotherapy and parental involvement and learning before going home. Chest physiotherapy should be done only when indicated and not as a routine procedure in neonates and infants. Some of the absolute contraindications to chest physiotherapy are undrained pneumothorax, acute pulmonary hemorrhage, severe osteopenia or bone pathology. If there is a recent intraventricular hemorrhage, babies with severe physiological instability or during the first week of life infants less than 1000 grams or less than 28 weeks of gestation and if there is a very low platelet count or prolonged clotting time. Pre-procedure assessment includes review of recent respiratory history. What are the ventilator settings including oxygen requirement, mode of ventilation, tidal volumes, pressures and resistance? Review and analysis of recent arterial or capillary gases, whether there are any episodes of desaturations or apnea, any changes in latest chest x-ray appearances, microbiology results including sputum and blood cultures and the cardiovascular status of the baby. What is the baby's response to handling? Observation of the color, chest movement and level of comfort and auscultation of chest sounds. Techniques used in physiotherapy include positioning, percussion and vibrations and if required, suction. Positions frequently used are supine, side-lying and prone. Head down tilt is contraindicated due to risks of IVH, reflux and respiratory compromise. If there is an area of acute collapse or consolidation due to secretion retention, the most effective position is the one in which the involved area is kept uppermost. To improve ventilation of an area, ideal is to keep the area in the dependent position. In infants with unilateral lung disease, saturation improves with the good lung down. An increase in the delivered oxygen may be necessary to keep the baby's saturations in the desired target range. The frequency of turning the baby will be in line with the baby's clinical status, that is, the changes in chest x-ray, tolerance or comfort of the baby, as well as observations including gases and saturation. While frequent position change is to be discouraged, care must also be taken to avoid leaving the infant in one position for prolonged periods of time. Hand hygiene is important before and after any patient care activity. To perform chest physiotherapy in ventilated baby, first identify the area to be treated on the basis of physical findings and the chest x-ray. 
then position the baby depending upon the area involved. Perform gentle percussions over the involved area using a cupped hand or baby mask for 1 to 2 minutes with a break after every 15 to 20 seconds. Percussions are rhythmical patting action over the chest wall using wrist flexion extension action either using two or three cupped fingers or holding a palm cup percussor or a soft baby mask or a feeding nipple. If a baby mask is used, the end of the baby mask that is attached to the ventilation bag is occluded with cotton. Percussion is thought to cause pressure changes in the airways which stimulate mucus clearance by ciliary stimulation and by the release of pulmonary chemical mediators that improve ciliary transport speed. Patting should be done in a rhythmical manner and should sound like a hollow and not a slap. Care should be taken that the head is always supported and is done over a layer of clothing and not over bare skin. It should always be done within the tolerance of the baby. Following percussions, vibrations along with gentle compression can be given with 3-4 fingers molded to the shape of the chest wall, timed with the expiratory phase of breathing. Vibrations help to move the mobilized secretions towards the larger airways. Following percussion and vibrations, suction may be required to clear secretions from the larger airways. If secretions are excessively tenacious, 0.25 ml saline can be instilled. The suction pressure should be 80 to 100 millimeters of mercury. The steps of chest physiotherapy followed by suction can be repeated for a maximum of 3 to 4 times. Any wet suction should be concluded by a final dry suction. In non-ventilated babies, the procedure of chest physiotherapy is similar but if the baby is stable or has a chronic lung problem, the positions can be given in mother's lap to make the baby more comfortable. These babies may require oral or nasal suction following chest physiotherapy. The depiction of hand without gloves is to give a clear picture of how the fingers are cupped for percussion and to see how vibrations are given. Points to be taken care of while performing chest physiotherapy are that percussion should not be done over bony areas like spine, clavicle or the sternum. Areas to be treated should be covered with towel or thin layer of clothing. Chest physiotherapy should be done either before feed or 60 to 90 minutes after feed. The baby's head should always be supported while performing active chest physiotherapy. Always monitor heart rate, saturation, blood pressure and signs of respiratory distress while performing chest physiotherapy. Chest physiotherapy should be stopped immediately if infant shows any signs of stress or instability.